What's up y'all, welcome back. So I am not prepared yet to do a full declutter the way that I typically would this time of year. It is coming, but it just, I need to like clear some space in this room. Either way, I wanted to do a video that I typically do around this time also that is difficult products that like stick out in my mind as being particularly challenging. And I want to try them one last time and make a decision on whether I want to keep them and keep trying them or whether I am ready to say goodbye. So I do have a full face of honestly like borderline reject makeup. This could also be like a full face of makeup that I hate kind of video. I am going to genuinely try to make these things work today. I have to go pick my kid up after this. So like, I'm not gonna be just like lampooning all of it, trying to make myself look like a clown. I never do that anyway, but you know what I mean. So either way, this is going to be a a study, right, in the different formulas that I have been complaining about for a while, but I'm kind of refreshing my memory on exactly how bad they are if they're really that bad. So let's go ahead and jump in. You know, I saw a, like a TikTok or a reel or whatever talking about the emotional support pieces of hair right here. Mine don't do anything else. Like that's it. That's just how they do it. Like they, it's like they never get long enough to stay in a ponytail or in a bun. And they actually seem to like grow in that downward direction. So I guess I was just made to have the emotional support pieces of hair. There's like, it's like way more work to try to get them to stay up. So. See if you can guess along in the comments. Just tell me kind of, you know, an overview of whether these are the products that you expected me to feature in a like top of mind, these were difficult of the year so far kinds of products, okay? So starting with this, I am dying to remind myself of how I feel about the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. I have this in 2N, it's a fantastic match. I just remember it being like, ugh, can't put my finger on it, it's just not working kind of formula and we're about to refresh our memory. Should we prime to like give it its best chance? I'll prime with a little bit of the Victoria Beckham here. Who knows, maybe it'll make a difference. I'm wearing all of the road stuff on my face, the glazing milk, the glazing bleh, serum stuff with niacinamide and then the moisturizer and like, I just hate to admit hat in hand that it is so good. <laughs> I was like so mad at being a road girly all of a sudden, like dead gummit. And if you're looking at my skin and you're like, wow, Kaki, okay, that actually looks like it's getting worse. I am on a very exciting product. So as I put this foundation on, I will tell you the long and storied tale. <laughs> so back when I was living in Austin, I saw a dermatologist that I still see remotely and they were able to compound this particular retinol for me. And it was from a company called, look at that shade match. It's great. It was from a company called Young Pharmaceuticals and they had basically the Young Pharmaceuticals packaging on it and it was called Reviage, Revi-Age, right? Revitalize your age. And it was like an anti-aging cream with like lactic acid in it and stuff. And it was quite potent in and of itself, but the way it was sold to me was that I kept coming in for chemical peels and the esthetician there said, why don't we just make you a compounded like retinol and uh, arbutase with this cream, right? So we'll just add these percentages of these actives in here and arbutase, I think is what it's called. Either way, they put it in there for me and it was expensive, but I went home and basically it served as kind of like an everyday maintenance that made it so I didn't have to get chemical peels hardly anywhere near as often, right? It was just this like amazing retinol that like once my skin, I mean, I didn't remember my skin having to get used to it because I think I had had so many chemical peels that my skin was just like immune at that point, but it just kept everything like pearly bright, you know, on my skin. I was like freckles who, pigmentation who, acne who. And then they had to white label it. So the Young Pharmaceuticals company told them that they couldn't carry it on their shelves as that brand. They had to make their own brand and their own packaging and everything. And they could still carry the product, but they had to put it in their own packaging. So that took years and I have been prodding them. And every single time I have my remote appointment for my psoriasis medication just to like you know check in and everything I ask I'm just like do you have it yet do you have it yet do you have it yet well the entire practice finally rebranded and if you're in Austin it 
is Revelous. They've renamed it Revelous, and it was Westgate Dermatology, Westgate Skin and Cancer, and I highly recommend going there and having a facial with their esthetician and my Botox was great there too. They were the first ones to do my lips kind of thing. I just love them over there. And they will probably be able to like, you know, also give you this and compound it for you. But I was able to get them to do it. It took some sweet talking, but I was able to get them to compound it for me and send it to me. And it has to be refrigerated. And the, sh the short part of the story, the moral of the story, the punchline is just that I finally got to start using it for the first time last night because I did actually have a VI peel. And so I didn't want to use it while, you don't use any actives while you're peeling. And so I got to use it yesterday and I forgot like, oh, it's not just this immediate clearing thing. It's like, oh, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna purge. But it is my favorite. It is my favorite product. And I'm so excited to have it in my hands again. So I'm gonna be purging for a little while. I'm gonna have to mind over matter to keep from picking, but it's all going to be worth it in the end. So my face is a little different color than my neck. And that is because I just filmed some shorts. And so I had to wash my face again. And so everything's kind of a little bit red. That's all. I'm really not in the mood to put a bunch of foundation on my neck, but if it comes to that, we will. But this is what it looks like it's beautiful. Like it's beautifully like pearly and dewy up close. Like it's just really pretty. And I did feel it grip a little bit more this time with the Victoria Beckham. So maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll work, but it does feel, I'm conscious of it. I'm aware that it's there kind of thing. It feels wet. So it's kind of what I remember, you know? You don't want it to just completely suck you dry, but you do want to feel like it's starting to secure a little bit, and I don't feel that happening yet. All right, the next thing that I have here, and I feel bad because not only, I mean, yes, I love to read Tom. I love to drag Tom for recommending this to me when they're not really a person who has like concealer needs hardly at all. So, you know, my concealer needs don't match their concealer needs, but my friend Natalie, who is like even drier skinned than I am loves this. And that doesn't make sense to me. I love you, Natalie, but I wanna give this another shake. So this is the Luminous Skin Concealer from Armani. Another quite good, I mean, a little yellow, but you know, fine for brightening. Shade match for me. And the key that I have heard with this is, you know, to keep it really thin. I think that that was the issue that I had was that it dried out my under eyes when I put enough of it on to really cover my under eyes kind of thing. And it is meant to stay really thin, but I am unnerved by the matteness of the bottle. Do you know what I mean? I think that that a lot of times reflects the dry down <laughs> finish of a formula. And I don't want a matte concealer. That's not my jam. Because what happens with me on a matte concealer is that the pigment particles tend to separate from the suspension that's emulsifying it. Over the day, because my skin is so dry, it will just kind of soak up whatever emollients is actually in the formula. And then it will just leave behind this like icky cracked powder on my skin, which, I don't know if you can tell by my tone, uh, is not my vibe. Oh my gosh, I just did a short and I was like testing a trick that I saw on TikTok and I ended up with like scene kid eyes and it was so funny. I was like, no, no. <laughs> it's like when they decided to bring back all of these decades in terms of trends, like they unfortunately brought it all back. Like how are you romanticizing like wet seal? I don't understand. I don't understand how you're romanticizing Juicy Couture and 579 and like Von Dutch. How are you romanticizing that? That was a very nightmarish time for us that we are all trying to forget, okay? All right, so you can see how that's not giving me as much coverage as I want. Like I still have this grayness showing through and that's why I have the urge to keep building it. And it doesn't like that. I mean, the good news is if it comes to rehoming this, I have two very good candidates. I'm actually building a package for Tom and one for Natalie. So it could go either way. Y'all fight it out. <laughs> but like, yeah, I just, it's not, it doesn't cover enough. And it just kind of makes me look dead, you know? When it just kind of covers a little bit, but it's like gray, it just makes me look dead. Yeah. Natalie, Tom, one of y'all gets this. The next thing here is this. This is the Toasted Sculpt Stick from Milk Makeup. And we talked about how this is like the most impossible contour to use because it is, I, honestly, I think it is for a fairer skin tone even than mine. 
basically. Like that is the gist that I get because it is so cool and almost gray that it like works on people who have like silver undertones, but then it also is like extraordinarily pigmented. And so it's tough to get it to like blend out enough to be sheer on pale skin. And so that was the reason I guess that I saw a lot of my fellow fair skinned creators having a lot of trouble not getting this to look like just a stripe of dirt. So what I saw as a hack, and it was actually a very good hack on the TikToks, and I ended up trying it on one of my shorts, was to put it on the back of the hand first, really warm it up, and then spray the beauty blender or the beauty sponge or whatever with setting mist. So I'm gonna use the Fix Plus Magic Radiance. I'm not even sure if it was spray the sponge or if it was spray your skin. Oh, that's right, they did it on a brush. She sprayed her brush, but we'll try it with a sponge because it's gonna thin the product out a little bit. But yeah, she sprayed her brush with setting mist before she went in with it. And it wasn't this particular one, but like you can see, it's like breaking down the product a little bit. Setting mist is such an interesting tool that I feel like we don't necessarily make the most of in our makeup routine. I remember I watched like a Wayne Goss video a while back where he was actually kind of like talking down on setting mists. He's like, y'all are all, you know, you don't understand how they work. And like, of course they do this, that, and the other because glycerin actually melts your makeup. And I was like, yeah, Wayne, that's like what we're doing here. Like, that's the point is you end up with so much makeup on your face sometimes that you want it to you want it to melt. He's like it's removing your makeup. I'm like, "Yeah, that's fine." <laughs> it's like using like a, a thinner of any kind. And so uh, I mean, let's be real. I have so many other contours in my collection and especially because they just repackaged my Uma in this gorgeous like luxurious West Mid Atelier style magnetic packaging that's just so perfect. I just don't really see any point in keeping something like this around. $25. $25 and I think this is 24. So this has, hello, six grams and this has 5.7 grams. So I mean, they're virtually the same price. I would recommend the Oma all day long, especially now that they've repackaged it. But like, that's not a flattering contour on me. It might, again, just be the wrong shade, but if that's the case, I definitely don't need it. Okay, next. And y'all have never seen this on camera because I have never made good enough use of it that I wanted to put it in a video. And Kelly gave me this. Why am I red? Like, I'm so red. Am I hot? I'm kind of hot, I guess. I have this raspberry seltzer. Hmm. Okay, so anyway, this is from the brand Dibs. This is called, I think, oh wow, they're out of Austin. Hmm. Yeah, I think that the biggest flaw of this foundation is that it's just not drying down. Like that's so much clearer to me than it was when I was like, I don't know, kind of bending over backwards trying to like it. It's like now I can definitely see like it wants to crease in like my chin line. Hmm. Like if I do that, you know, and it like bends, like, the makeup wants to crease right there and I can feel stuff sticking to me. Even though I have it powdered, like, you know, sure. Like it's gonna stick to you. But I mean, this feels molten. It feels like I just put it on. Okay, so khaki. <sighs> My attention span's been horrible lately. The brand is Dibs. Kelly Gooch gave this to me when I was visiting her and it is a double ended. It's called like the Desert Island Stick or whatever. I think that this is, a yes, this is supposed to be a bronzer. Yeah. I think we can get away with that being a bronzer. It's almost kind of a contour. And then the other side is your blush. And I was like so excited. I almost bought this on Revolve or something. And then when I was staying with Kelly, I was like, ooh, oh my God, I've been wanting to try this. She goes, you can have it. <laughs> I was like, oh, not good. Ooh, they're scented and it's kind of nice. It's sort of like vanilla, vanilla fruit a little bit. Hmm, okay. So we will start with the bronzer and I have, like I said, yet to really use this on camera. Oh my God, my face is so sticky. Oh, it's so sticky. Look at it creasing in my eyelids. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna use my sponge. Hello. And these aren't like, wildly expensive, but I don't think they're like wildly inexpensive either. That's an okay color. I don't mind that. I don't know why I didn't swatch this as part of my bronzer video. I think I had it in my blush drawer. That's why I just didn't see it. But we are talking about a much more kind of sunburny color. It's got a lot of red in it. You know, it's almost going blushy on me a little, which is why I'm using it across my whole nose. That's not bad, I don't mind that. Maybe Kelly got rid of it because Kelly is just not that into super dewy makeup. She is more of like a matte makeup girl. So either way, let's go with the blush. It's a really pretty color. I love peach, especially summertime. That's gorgeous. 
I feel like I'm really working against that concealer underneath my eyes though, like ugh. The way that it made my under eyes just look gray. And it might just be that the shade two has like a lot of yellow in it. And so maybe the yellow plus the purple, instead of canceling it out because it's translucent, it's just making it like gray, like it's making it like a mud color. Maybe, maybe that's how color theory is working for us today. Okay, I definitely gave myself like a sunburn. <laughs> Looking a little bit like Chernobyl right now, but I think when we powder, it's gonna improve. <sighs> Has the time come to powder? Oh, I forgot what I did with <laughs> my choice on the powder for this video. Oh, no. <sighs> Oh boy. So as I love pretty much everything that I have tried from Uma, a lot of their stuff, especially the things that don't have shades, a lot of them are formulated for oily skin, okay? And so this is, I feel like, something that would work really well for someone like Jackie Ina, who wants a really kind of smoothed, mochi skin finish on their skin, but they need oil control and I don't really need that. This is the Hydro Blast and you know, I've used powders like this in the past. Prescriptives had one, Becca had one, I think. I think it was Becca that had one, but it is. It's a powder that has water in it, okay? And so when you put it on, it feels like cool on your skin. I tried this and it made my skin look laden, laden with makeup. It just soaked it up so bad and I was like, uh-oh. So I will try this, I will try this again. Like if it doesn't work, it's fine. We just, we're just trying to make some decisions here. I'll make it work. This is a highlighter brush from Rare Beauty. And I think that maybe just like the tininess and the looseness of it is gonna help. I put it on the back of my hand just now and like it was gorgeous on bare skin, but I don't know how it's gonna go on the rest of it. It feels nice, but it wants to grab a little bit. Yeah, it wants to grab cause it's so wet. It feels really good though. That is so interesting. Like the brush is wet. What a, what a strange <laughs> sensation, but it is mattifying but it does have water in it. And it's adding a little bit of coverage. Huh. Did I say the name of this? This is the Hydro Blast. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little exposed here in 4K. Like, look at, look at that texture that it created. It just looks gummy, you know? Like it grabbed in kind of gross ways that no other powder necessarily would. So at least a wet sponge can kind of help a little bit, but it just kind of, you can't control how it deposits because it's so wet. Imagine trying to literally like try and wipe something that's half wet, half dry on with a brush. It just doesn't really work, you know, because it doesn't know whether to fluff or to like paint <laughs> onto your skin. And so it kind of just does an in-between that makes everything look a little bit gummy. But I think that that helped. Yeah, cause I've still got some setting mist on my sponge and I think that it kind of melted it a little bit. Not too bad, not too bad, but like not my first choice. I wonder if Tom would like this. <laughs> if nothing else, I'd like to see them try it. Okay. I think that we've made an okay face of makeup so far. I don't think that we are, you know, in line to sabotage anything necessarily. However, however, <laughs> I am going to try this. I'm gonna try it as a highlighter. I tried it like all over my face. I tried it as a mix in, things like that. But this is the Kosas Glow IV. And the issue that I tend to have with it, oh my God, everything is clinging to my face. Oh, this foundation never dries down. Never dries down. The issue with this is that it actually dries kind of matte. So it looks kind of like an eyeshadow. I don't know, maybe if I mix it with like a little bit of primer, just a little. Victoria Beckham primer and don't use it like totally by itself. Let's see, let's see if that works. Oh my God, how is every hair in creation finding my face right now? I am like a magnet. and then it dried. You can't see. It's like it it picked all my makeup up right here. Maybe that's the primer. Oh, look at that. It like picked it all off of my cheek right there. Did anyone like this? 
Did anyone like this product? Because <laughs> I am aggravated. <laughs> I'm putting some more blush on. That's so annoying. No, there are so many great highlighters out there. You don't need to do that. Like that is just such a frustrating product. And it just doesn't even look good even when it is on, you know? Like even if you're able to get like exactly what you wanted out of it or exactly what it's designed to do out of it, it still doesn't look that good. If you're looking for a good liquid highlight, the one from Rare Beauty is beautiful. The one from M Cosmetics is beautiful. The Chanel Rosy Light Drops are amazing. The Drage stick from Chanel is amazing. So yeah, I just, I don't, I don't need to have to struggle with something like that. Okay. Uh oh. This whole video is just a blast from the past, isn't it? I'm going to try and steer clear of the pink and see if I like what I get from this Chantecaille palette from last spring. This is the Wild Meadows Eye Quartet. And like, I just could not get this color story to work for me. And you know what? There could be someone out there who really, really wants this. I know Steph likes it, but like, why would she want another one? You know what I mean? And like, maybe, I don't know, Natalie, do you have this? Maybe, maybe somebody with even fairer skin than I have, because I know Hannah likes it. So either way, let's, let's give her a shot. Actually, we'll start. I want to give everything in this video its best chance, you know? And so I'm going to start with some Hindash Color Fluid in canvas. See if I can get a nice even base to start with. All right, let's see what eye look we get out of this when we just use like the safe colors, right? It's a lot more pigment than I remember the brown having. I did pull the, which one? The pangolin, just in case this goes sideways and I need another Chantecaille shadow to pull it back on the rails. Pangolin's pretty good. Always makes me think of <laughs> A line in the British Baking Show when Noel is like, I was a feral child, I was raised by pangolins. I don't know what kind of mousetrap situation is going on inside that man's brain, but I love him. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately because it's August, which means, aren't we due? Aren't we due for a new season of the Great British Baking Show? I I haven't checked social media yet, but God, I mean, such a heartwarming thing. It was like my favorite thing right when my kiddo was born was to watch that show, which I guess he was born at the end of September, but that was in 2020. So I think that the season was late. I remember crying when I heard the music of the season starting because it was just like this gigantic exhale for the difficult year that 2020 had been for me being pregnant and isolated. And I was like, nothing is normal. I can't see anybody. I have this baby and I just, and then like, I hear like, do, 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 do. And I was like, it's so pure. And I just like, God, ah, uh, I'm the worst. Okay. Anyway, today, today I was at yoga and I was talking to people. I need, I'm trying to find a little brush here. That'll do. I was talking to some people afterwards and they were talking about doing like uh, stand up paddleboard yoga. And I was like, I've tried it, but I've never like done a class or whatever, but it was really big in Austin and all this stuff. And then somebody said like, well here you have to wear a life vest. And I was like, I can't even imagine wearing a life vest trying to do yoga. I was like, surely there's gotta be a better, a better solution. And they're like, well, you know, this body of water that they're doing it in is really deep. And I was like, so have me sign a waiver. You know, if somebody drowns, it's like not, you know, they say that's not their fault or whatever. And then this guy next to me goes, but then you have to watch somebody drown. And I said, oh, you're like an empath or whatever. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm an empath or whatever. So what's that like? He goes traumatizing. <laughs> I said I'm way too busy being an Aries. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's a taste of the darkness that you'll get on the podcast. Okay, so I'm enjoying that brown, but I kind of knew that I would enjoy that brown. You know what I mean? Like, I just kind of was like, it's brown. Okay, then we have this like super cool toned taupe that makes no sense on my skin. None. But maybe if we layer the gold on top of it, did I follow the same stream of consciousness in the first video? Probably, like when I reviewed this. It's just not for me. It's definitely, I mean, I get why Steph likes it because she looks good in silver tone jewelry, you know? And I'm a, <laughs> clearly a gold girl. Oh, not my finest work. Not my finest work, family. Mainly because I started laughing so much while I was putting this on. Not the worst thing in the world. And then we have this like very strange, like yellow gold, which I guess, I will put way too much up on, apparently. Uh, hmm, sure, why not? 
I mean, it's fine. I want to, I, I don't know. It's just, I think on the whole, it's just too cool toned, you know? Like it's just giving gray on me when it's not in the pan, but I don't know if I remember this being purple. Holy crap, that's not what I meant. Pangolin's really pretty, but like that's, but purple, I'm not in the mood for that. I was really into cool tones for a while. Okay, uh, let's do something else. Let's do something warm. Let's do something, I think this is like the safest option that I can still call it. Like I still tried to use these products without pulling out a whole other palette. <laughs> like I'm staying true to my words. So this is, oh, it saves everything. This is the Victoria Beckham bronzer the matte bronzing brick in one and it just warms everything up, you know? And it's super subtle, super blendable. And then I'll use the darker shade to kind of blend onto my lid. It's still gonna bring more warmth than the palette did. And maybe we'll just leave it like that. You know, it's just kind of a matte-ish eye look. Like some of the shimmer's still showing through, but I don't want to just like cover it up with a shimmer. <laughs> You know, I mean, like, cause that's, that's the easy way out, but yeah, you know, it's fine. It's like an eye look that I would wear on an everyday basis. It's just not particularly exciting for you. So I didn't have any particularly difficult eyeliners or mascara. Well, if I had difficult mascaras, they have not been used in so long that I do not feel safe putting them on my eyes. And as far as brow products are concerned, I just, there are very few that really bother me, you know, unless they're like too dark, like just the wrong color. And like, I don't think that that's necessarily like a controversial declutter decision, decision, a decision, a controversial declutter decision. So I'm just going to zoom through my eyeliner and my mascara and my brows, and then we will come back and talk about lips. Yeah, and then we'll do a smash or pass on everybody. ate that blush. I do feel like that happened. I kind of want to put a little bit more on because like, I feel like we lost most, most of the contrast. I also don't feel like I'm getting any contrast in texture because even though the powder is a, a finicky one, it still doesn't leave you with an actual mattified finish. And so between that and the foundation that just won't stop being dewy no matter what I do. I mean, I haven't tried powdering it to death, sure, but I do feel like my whole face is shiny. But that's how we're gonna leave that because I wanna show everything, you know, in its honest to God, truest form, right? I do feel like my eyes look pretty nice. Kind of, okay. So the lip product that I chose, there are very few things that really bug me in a lip product. You're just not, I mean, sure, maybe a color. And back when we were doing Clean Routine 2019, there were a lot of duds. Oh, there were so many duds. I don't really understand like Juice Beauty. Are they still in business? And if they are, how? Because nothing worked. Nothing worked from Juice Beauty. It just didn't work. This is more of a case of this just being a really extreme formula and I kind of want to refresh my memory on it. So this is the like, out, it's called Outrageous Intense Plumping Lip Gloss from Sephora, the Sephora collection. And they didn't even, I mean, it smells slightly minty, but it mostly just smells like a plumping chemical. So let's go. Actually, you know what I did find? I found another khaki lip liner. I'm so excited. Found it in my drawer, so this still has plenty in it. We'll use this. It's the best lip liner in the world. I just ran out. If y'all don't know, yes, I have a perfectly mocha lip liner named after me from Thrive Cosmetics, and that's what this is. Okay. Outrageous intense, let's go. It's 
definitely turning my lips pink. And not like pH pink, like irritation pink. Yes, ooh, yes. It's prickly and it's intense. I don't think it's as bad as the Milk Makeup one. The one that has actual Sichuan peppers in it. It's definitely prickly, I definitely notice it, but I don't know. It's also definitely plumping my lips and I'm definitely into that part. Well, the lips are plumping. The cheeks just are hungry. <laughs> wow. Wow, 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 wow. I'm wondering when this sensation is going to stop, but right now I feel like Jennifer Coolidge. I'm just very like, wow. I don't do a good Jennifer Coolidge. Okay, while this is all happening, let's go ahead and go back through everything and do a quick smash or pass. So quickly, the ones that I am going to be getting rid of. Yes, I am going to get rid of the makeup by Mario. Of all of the beautiful foundations that I own, this one, I they forgot one part. They forgot, the, they didn't finish it. It does have to, have eventually dry down and it just doesn't it doesn't seem willing to and it's so sludgy and I'm so aware of it and it's so sticky and as soon as I turn the camera off I'm going to powder the crap out of my face <laughs> that's happening and then the Armani luminous silk concealer again Tom and Natalie find it out in the comments for who wants this <laughs> because I don't this milk makeup toasted stick I really feel like I've given it its fairest shake it needs to go to someone who is paler than I am and who's willing to work with it but now that the Oma one is in separate packaging you don't have to buy the double-ended stick and it's just so elegant like why this just <sighs> they're calling their bluff on the price on the shade range on the formula on everything again not that they asked to be competitors you know it's not like they've you know came out guns blazing being like we're coming for milk makeup it's like no they just make a great product but as far as my collection is concerned I just am always gonna go for the Oma jeez like am I okay it like doesn't stop. It's kind of annoying how long it's tingly for. Hydroblast. I don't want this. It doesn't work for me. I don't really know exactly how to make it work for anyone because it's going to wet your brush. I think that's the issue. <laughs> if it didn't wet my brush, it'd be different, but it does. It wets my brush and I just don't understand how I'm supposed to use it. So pass this one along. I wouldn't wish this on anyone. I don't, I mean, if there is some kind of, if there's a creator friend of mine who, you know, wants to try this as like a masochistic measure, sure, you know, test the limits of what you can tolerate in terms of glow, but this is just such a dud of a product to me. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work for anything that they ask it to do. The eyeshadow palette, if anybody in my life wants it, I'm going to pass it along to them. It's just too cool toned for me. I'm just like gonna never end up reaching for it because I have to do kind of so much work for an outcome that is pretty blah in the end. So it's just not for me. And those are the ones that I will be decluttering. That's quite a lot. And then we have two that I wanna keep. I'm gonna keep the dib stick. I think that it's fine. I think it's really pretty. Like I feel like it gave me a really realistic looking sun-kissed glow. And I think that my skin kind of aided a little bit, mainly because of all the hydration of the foundation, but then I could probably get it to work with other things. Like, at least I wanna keep trying it. I don't wanna just dismiss it out of hand. I think it's good. And I think the packaging is really cool. It's giving like old school Vidal Sassoon to me. I don't know, I love it. I love it. And then, I'm gonna hold on to this because I think it's the only lip plumper of this caliber, of this like level that I own. And like, I don't, you know what I mean? I don't wanna get rid of it just because it's extreme, but I, I just, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it just sits until it's expired. I don't like a really bright lip on me anyway. And there is something about this that looks like I have put on pink lip gloss and like, that's not really my deal. It's like, maybe if I were to put something on top of it, but then I'd be afraid that the very peppery ingredient would get back into that lip gloss kind of thing. Like maybe I wipe it off. You know what I mean? It's like, it doesn't have to stay on for the effects to stay kind of thing. And then you could put something else on top of it. Has any Anyone done that because uh, I don't think anybody would argue that my lips are not bigger than they were five minutes ago because I was definitely working. <laughs> what a time to be alive! <laughs> we have the technology. <laughs> this is what we do. This is my job doing this on the internet, being like, My lips are bigger than they were five minutes ago. I am alone in a room talking to a camera, <laughs> having an existential crisis. So, yeah, uh, we're getting rid of a lot of stuff. It's not that I didn't expect it, otherwise I wouldn't have pulled it out to begin with, but I'm glad I gave them one last chance to reassure me on why exactly. And honestly, too, to have a good touch point to come back to, people being like, why'd you get rid of that? It's like, I don't remember. You know what I mean? It's like, no, now I remember. <laughs> it's worth trying them one more time while I have them in my hands. Some of them are bad, and some of them are just not for me. So anyway, I hope that y'all liked this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if there's any other products that you thought would be in this video that weren't in this video, tell me down below, like stuff you know is in my collection 
direction that you thought is like an obvious standout weird difficult product to use that I didn't put in this video and we will do a part two. I would love to do it because this was, this was actually a lot of fun. So yeah, if you aren't already subscribed, I, I heard that cool people subscribe. So subscribe if you're cool. It'd be cool if you did. I can barely talk because my lips are weirdly numb. And I love you all so much. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.